If you want to know when the next um, Grand Tour is out, one, and I shall now hand over to Richard, I am now paying attention, Hammond, <laughs> who uh, hosts around on the NATO phonetic alphabet, which he's used to because he flies a helicopter and has to speak in that language all the time. There he is. I, I have, we have got messages coming through. Some people saying <laughs> Clarkson's even feeding through this. So I'm going to go a little more slowly. Why have you got a, 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 a jar full of what appear to be eyeballs or words? I don't think it's brains. Hey, listen, brains. Brains. No, these are not, they're not eyeballs. These are my pickled onions. Or is this a show and tell of your pickled onions? What? Get on with that. You have oh. pickled onions. I'd leave if I were you. Do you mind if I get a drink whilst you read your questions, Hammond? Mean, nothing personal, but I've run out. What? Thanks for your support, mate. That's great. Oh, yeah. That's, thank you. Oh, I used to love these ads. In a famous series of adverts for the Renault Clio in the 1990s, the two main characters were Nicole. Yeah. What? When you worked for them, Hammond. And you no. worked for Renault. You don't need this corporate loyalty anymore. You don't work for I don't want any questions. I um, hate Renault. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look, you had Nicole and somebody else whose name features in the phonetic alphabet. That's the answer to that question. And I'm not going to talk about it anymore because I will give it away and say it. Uh, question number six. You were rubbish when you worked for Renault. I remember you. Tell I wasn't me. doing was I? No. I, and so, you know, I used to work in press office briefly. I dropped out of broadcasting because I obviously wasn't any good at it. I was starving to death. Got a job in the press office at Renault and regularly had to host. Jeremy, I never hosted you at an event, did I? No. <laughs> no, I've become too important to go on press launches. No, 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 no. <laughs> May I just ask a question to you two who both fly aircraft? Yeah. Why do you have a phonetic alphabet? Why don't you just say, I'm okay. in GEO3P? Because, because if you say B and it's not a very good signal, you could be saying C, D, G, or E. It's just for clarity. It's the same yeah, reason. Well, I say Birmingham then. What? Mm. Birmingham. The, Birmingham. That, that is, that is yeah, a problem. That's okay. If you all agree the same word, oh, I, don't, you perhaps oh, it, I don't know what the B is. I just go Birmingham, Bolton. Some people or do. Okay, Clarky, Kine, Kipling, Q Wake, Keeble on College, Oxford. Why would you? Because it's, it's just a huge job. job. <laughs> you make it, it look more difficult than it actually is. No, it's because it actually it's because it was made international and the international language is English, but we needed to have words that all languages could understand clearly. Because the old the old phonetic alphabet in English before it was standardised was completely different, which is why we have what? the word Roger for receive. Can I just can I just ask this one? What's the phonetic for? Oh no, that's Jeremy Clarkson down there, and he's shining a laser in my eyes, which is what I'm going to do to the light aircraft flyers who come over my house from now on. Oh no, we would, you wouldn't do that phonetically. No. no. <laughs> What would you say? Nobody had a chance. Yes. I wouldn't say no, that. I mean, I just, can I just, yeah. Before we move on to the sport round, which is obviously very appropriately hosted by me, yeah. can I just say there was a comment uh, on the stream just then, Richard Hammond, I, I can't tell you who it was because he's already scrolled off the top of the page, but he said, please don't hold your gin and tonic so close to the camera because it appears to be bigger than your head. I just want whoever you were to know uh, that, it, it that actually his gin and tonic is bigger than his head. It, it, it's bigger. <laughs> he's actually holding it behind him. Yeah. So. I'm the only dangerous I can win. What if I do that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stop holding your onions up to the camera, Jeremy. You got into trouble last time you did that. <laughs> Question six. The daily online PE classes with Joe Wicks have been hugely popular during lockdown. Yes, they have. The phrase Joe often says during the kangaroo hops exercise is don't drop your what? So we're looking for the missing word from um, uh, from Joe Wicks's uh, catchphrase. Don't drop your what does he say, James? Yes. Have you ever done Joe Wicks's PE class? I, very briefly, yes. Oh, you are joking. I actually asked that like as a joke. Well, you haven't really. No, I did watch it. Yes, because my my niece and nephew did it, so I thought I'd join, well, not join him literally because I wasn't with them, but. Did you dress up to join it? Did you wear your old school pumps? I just wonder if you're going to have a picture of horror, let's make it really horrific. I didn't I didn't join in, Alan. I just watched it. Oh. I didn't do it. Sorry, I interrupted. Carry on. Mm. He did. Where had I got to? 
Clarkson's buggered off. Should we all disappear and go somewhere else and not tell him? And then he can just be on his own. Doing well, a different channel. Right. We can, how do we establish like another link? And we'll all quite quickly and then do quickly click leave this meeting and go to the other one. So oh, you have your mates all so like, everybody doing it now. All so like when I'm you give one of your mates the wrong address for a party. Or should we all face the other way and tell him that we're all facing the other way now? And then he'll assume we really are. <laughs> <laughs> but if we all sit like that, then he'll think we're all oh no, he's back. <laughs> I can hear every word you're saying. Oh, I've yeah. just been excuse myself, apologies everybody, I'm back. Which snooker player holds the record for the fastest competitive 147 break, 147 big break in snooker, a feat he achieved with a time of 5 minutes and 8 seconds, and that was at the 1997 World Championships. So who has the record 5 minutes, 8 seconds, 147 break in a snooker World Championship? It was in 1997. We want his name. We, play, we tried playing snooker once, didn't we? Because I, I generally refused to. Cause... You and Jeremy tried playing snooker and I mean... we commentated. No. for the first three hours then i went to bed because it was so dreary <laughs> <laughs> and then you got up in the morning and we were still you playing were still you there, yeah. to the ball. <laughs> i can't play <laughs> snooker with somebody really, and richard <laughs> one talking that he was the worst snooker player that the world has ever seen and i said no i think i'm worse and mm. we i think we played for six hours yes. and there were people in the room going oh dear there's something wrong with them and I, hate to break, I hate to break it to you because you two were not in a state to recognize it at the time but that was actually cool it wasn't snooker, it was a very <laughs> snooker table. That's, that's, that's a degree of finesse that really is irrelevant at our level of... Well, it is. Yeah. Yeah. And let's go back to it because people will tune out otherwise. Question 12. In 2018, Lizzie Yarnold became the first British athlete to win a Winter Olympic title. What is the one-word name of the sport in which she won gold? Lizzie Yarnold, we have all met her. In fact, we should all get this one. Really? Yes, we it's have. It's a silly surname if your first name's Lizzie and your second name's Yarnold because you have to say Lizzie Yarnold. Lizzie Yarnold. Yeah, Lizzie only named the word in two consecutive Y's in it. Yeah. So what? What is? What is the name of her sport? What is it called? And it's a one-word name. When did we meet her? Uh, we met her when we filmed the yesterday West morning, Gavin. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, I definitely. Remember. Maybe it was just me. It was when I did one of those things in Lillehammer. I can't remember. I thought we were all there. Now, Hammond was there. doing daytime television then, remember? And oh, the, you right. and I had to. And then he came over at the oh, weekend because yes. he thought right. he was going to be a daytime TV host. Yeah. And then you and I had to go and do it by ourselves. And then at the week, and then what was even more amazing is he decided not to be a daytime TV host on Monday and stayed to play yeah. with us. And then he always said that was we were so irresponsible. Professional. You were hopeless on that. That's also that's also the. The shoot in which you and me, Jeremy, had a race between a Volvo and an, uh, it was a Volvo XC90 and the then new Audi Q7. And we decided. We crashed that, your, you crashed your Audi how many times? Three? No, you, you crashed into me. I wrote a letter to Audi to explain that to them. Very yes, simply. I know, but the viewer had all seen you crashing into me. It didn't matter. I think you crashed. It was crashed. Let's not get involved down. Crash. You, but it was crashed three times. But what was yeah, most excellent I, about it was it went all the way through the edit and we, we put all the voiceover on and declared that the Audi had won before somebody, somebody's wife, I think, pointed out that it was a delayed start. So actually the Volvo had won and no, none of us <laughs> had worked that out because it had a same head start. We've said it anyway, many times before. We were like, rubbish, weren't we? I mean, what were we thinking? We were fairly hopeless in those days. No. And which golfer, Jeremy will know this, nicknamed the Golden Bear, has won a record 18 major championships, three more than his nearest rival, Tiger Woods. So in Neyman's terms, um, which golfer has won three more championships than Tiger Woods? Hammond, you know this, you play golf. Was it Alistair Cook? Yes. <laughs> no. It was, oh. it, it was Jack Always Nicholas. give way to traffic emerging from the left, Hammond. You know <laughs> that's the standard of when you're struggling. Oh. <laughs> Lizzie Yarnold, what she did, did she do to win her win she okay. win gold? We are, are we the only three men <laughs> who don't do any sport? We're from different worlds, okay? We are all from very different worlds, different backgrounds, different everything. Here we all are. We are uniquely joined at the hip by a deep seated loathing of golf. Oh, it is, <laughs> it's unbelievable that you would think, okay, it's James May, classically musically trained, interested in all sorts of things. I'm not. Richard Hammond, there he is with his space in his house for his lampshade. And in Wales with his horses and everything. And there's me and there's a, doing what I do. And we, 
We don't agree on anything except we don't like golf. Not interested in it. You wouldn't imagine three middle-aged men that be a golfer between us. One of them. Yeah, you'd think one of them's bound yeah. to be a golfer. We did it. It was in secret. We don't like it. We did play it. I remember when we had a go and I hit it back. Oh. I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> It's quicker to kick it round. It yeah. is. Je- oh, oh, yeah. it Actually, round. it's quicker to lie on the floor and play it as a very big game of snooker. It's still quicker than hitting it round the course. I'd rather post it. <laughs> uh, Fourteen thousand pounds has been raised so far by this wow. quiz for well, the Phoenix project. Very well, just to redistribute food to people in need, food that would otherwise go in landfill, the bin, or an incinerator, which is not allowed. As my mother was Can saying, I just say, James, if I may just back you up on this, this is something yes. I've never said to you in 20 years. This no, is we know though, so don't worry. No, this is oh, food. Right. No, no. This is food that has best before dates and it's not quite out of date and it's there's nothing wrong with it, and you distribute it to people who basically could do with some food. That's the plan, yes? Yeah, some sometimes it's just because the packaging is damaged, to be honest. Well, that's all exactly. it is. I was told today, and this is, I think, an important point, bearing in mind who we're raising money for, that honey, that I now have a quarter of a million bees here, we're growing, um, we're growing, cultivating, whatever the word is, honey, um, and I've got some of it i collected today, I've had the bottom bit, I don't know if you can see that, that was taken out of the hive today, that is honey. Mm-hmm. Now, if I put that in a jar and sell it in my shop, I have to put, I have to put, by law, a label on it saying when it's best before date is, you know, best before whenever. Well, honey, you could eat it, as we all know, 5,000 years down. It never goes off. It's it's yeah. perfect food. It is a preservative, isn't it? It's used exactly. So if I put on it best before February 2021, that means in February 22, there's nothing wrong with it, but I have to throw it away. Is, can you not put best before 7,050 on the label? I have. I'm, I've already ordered labels saying best before 3030 on it. But it has to have a best before label on it. But it's honey. And um, my bees have been very busy making it and it'll last forever. And so this is why this Felix yeah. project that James well, has been is. very involved in is a very, very good idea. And I support it is a good James idea. for doing it. I, I mean, we, we are, well, Hammond, not, not Hammond because he's only 37, obviously, but you and me, Jeremy, we are of an age where our mothers, who obviously went to the same college of being mothers, would have said, waste not, want not, you can't leave until you've eaten all your food and we mustn't waste anything and all the rest of it, which is actually all this is doing in society. The, the, the amount of food, I mean, I go and do that little bit of volunteer driving in one Felix depot, but on one day, that depot, which is only the size of... It's about the, the size of a 10-car garage. It's an industrial unit shifted 30 tonnes of perfectly good food that otherwise would have gone in landfill or an incinerator. And I'm not, I don't think bags of crisps. There's another the issue as well. I, can, I, I absolutely am with you on this, and I can broaden it out even further. One of the things I'm, I'm as you know, now doing farming, and one of the things that is really beginning to irritate me is people oh, buy food and then their kids go, oh, I just want a Twix. And they push their vegetables to the side of the plate. And you just think, no, no, don't do that. There's only enough food in the world to feed so many people. There are 7 billion people in the world. People have to eat. They have to eat everything on their plates. So children, I don't know if there's any kids watching this, whatever is put on your plate for supper tonight, eat all of it. Even if it's sprouts. Yeah. Even if it's sprouts. Just eat all of it. it the world... Because everyone says, oh, it's going to be bad for the environment if farmers grow over 7 billion. Yeah, but it'd be fi- everything will be fine if everyone eats everything on their plate. Even if, just that, just eat everything. I know in America that's tricky because it's all by far too much, but just eat everything. Yes, yeah, celebrate, <laughs> celebrate flavour, not quantity. That's the essential difference between Europe and America when it comes to food. Don't think about it. Think about it. I'm not boring you about tomatoes soon. And yeah, we, I was just about to say, we're going to get on to small tomatoes versus big tomatoes. James and I agree on very little, but that's one of the things we really do agree on. America, your tomatoes are shit. Absolute shit. Really and watery. Tomatoes really are much, much better, and you should buy European tomatoes. Really small. I'm not growing tomatoes, by the way, so that's not... Um, Alan, look, he's, he's literally died of boredom. I may just, well, if I may just reiterate what I said the last time I came on to one of these uh, events with our producer, Andy Wilman. If you want to know when the next um, 
Grand Tour is out, please don't ask us. We don't know. Amazon Prime know they have it. It's finished. It's done. <coughs> it's filmed. Um, it's edited. It's graded. It's it's ready to go. And it's up to them when they put it out. So stop asking us, please. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We yeah. don't know. Um, we're really looking forward to seeing it as much as you are. It was bloody good fun to make uh, in Madagascar, which is a hell of a place. Um, and we think we had a we made a hell of a story. And we hope you enjoyed uh, enjoy watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. In the meantime, though, <coughs> eat all your food. And if you can help the Fearless Project in, in any way, then do so. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. We'll bail out on. Ready? Three, Ready. Goodbye, two, everyone. One. Bye.